Hello everyone, thank you for coming out today. Okay. Hi everyone, thank you for coming out today. And My name is Tim Hauser and I'm an Air Force veteran that served from 1982 to 1992. And I was deployed to Saudi Arabia in support of Operation Desert Storm. And while I was deployed there, I was uh, not only exposed to burn pits, but uh, to uh, oil well fires that the Iraqi army intentionally set as an environmental weapon to use against us. I have become ill due to this exposure, and I had to fight the VA for 25 years before they finally accepted my proof that I was sick from this exposure. And we are holding this rally to show support for our fellow veterans that are sick from toxic exposure that have been continuously denied health care by the VA and we show our support today by supporting um, uh, a congressional bill HR 3967 called honoring our PACT Act. This bill recently was passed by Congress and will be presented to the Senate n uh, next week. This bill will cover veterans from the Vietnam War to include future veterans. Recently, the Senate passed their own exposure bill titled S-3541, Healthcare for Burn Pit Veterans Act. The bill is for post 9-11 veterans only, and it, it's for those veterans who have been separated from service for less than 10 years. It will extend their eligibility of health care benefits from five years to ten, giving the veteran extra time to file a claim. Sadly, the latency period for most illnesses related to this exposure is 10 to 15 years, which is well outside the extended protected window of benefits included in this bill. The PACT Act will remove that time constraint and allow veterans to file claims when they become ill. The Senate bill does not provide presumptive benefits, forcing veterans to still prove that they are ill due to exposure while they were deployed. Whereas the PACT Act will provide presumptive benefits, which includes at least 24 illnesses related to toxic exposure, and this list will grow. I don't know about you, but I am no longer going to accept the crumbs that politicians throw at us just so they can say they support veterans. We stepped up to serve our country, so it is time that they step up to honor those that risk their lives, health, and families to protect and serve. Today we tell the VA it is time to listen to us. Today we tell our senators to do the right thing and pass the PACT Act. I believe this isn't a partisan issue or a party issue, but an issue that every American should support. So please call your senators and tell them to pass the Honoring Our PACT Act. If they don't answer, leave a message. Matter of fact, you can even email them. And please do this every day. Fill up their voicemails. Fill up their email boxes. Let them know that veterans need the Honoring Our PACT Act passed so we can finally get the health care that we desperately need and deserve. And now what I would like to do is uh, bring up an individual who's a widow. Her husband happened to have passed away from this exposure and she'd like to say a few words. So Crystal, if you'd like to come up, please.
Hi, uh, my name is Paul McMillan and this is Crystal. Um, Crystal, it, like many people, is dealing with a horrific loss and has stated that she's just not really feeling up to personally saying a few words, but she did want to come here and represent him. His name was Jeff Yocom and he passed away from cancer. Um, I know you told me a little bit of his story, so I'm just going to share what you shared and yeah. stop me if I'm... Um, uh, if I'm incorrect on what I'm remembering, because unfortunately there's just too many of these stories that we're hearing. Uh, Jeff was a staff sergeant in the United States Army. He deployed, went overseas, exposed to burn pits and all these other toxic exposures. He came home. He then went back as a contractor, got back uh, late summer, early fall, um, didn't feel right, was suddenly diagnosed with stage 3B cancer and passed away that December. Uh, this is a story that we're hearing more and more often. As uh, everyone saw recently, our other friend Danielle Robinson, who's taking a much needed vacation, was recently invited to the White House uh, by the Bidens because she lost her husband Heath under the same circumstances. This is not an aberration. These are things that are happening time and time again. And we keep hearing the same story. We don't understand how people are sick. We don't see why we should have to take care of them. You know, he was a person who sold his family he had, or, and his country. He had a family, and now they've lost him. And if this has been handled differently, we have to wonder if there's a chance he could even still be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, again, good afternoon or good morning. My name is Paul McMillan. I am uh, actually a former Cleveland resident, grew up here, and now live in Columbus. Senator Portman, we are calling on you to stand in solidarity with all of us who are dealing with this issue. We are uh, uh, telling you this is an extension of the 9-11 issues that our firefighters dealt with. This is completely the same as what they were exposed to and what we were exposed to. We are being left behind, and Senator Portman, we need you to honor your pact. This is an American issue. To the rest of America, we are suffering and we are dying. We have fought for you. We have bled for you. We have killed for you, and we have shattered our psyches and our souls for you in a country that celebrates the constitutionally guaranteed inalienable right to life we have fought for, we are now being denied that right ourselves. PACT Act is an extension of the 9-11 First Responders Bill. It offers us the same protections that were given to the men and women who helped dig our nation out of despair as they sifted and sorted through the pile. I'm sure it's meaningful to you, Senator Portman, because on December 3rd, 2015, you co-sponsored the bill for the 9-11 firefighters. This is the same bill just being extended to us. Veterans Affairs is completely negligent in its care for us. Its leaders continue to debate the exact methodology of how every person individually is getting sick from these issues. The level of scrutiny that they are using us is beyond any reasonable standard. It is just delay and deny. At the end of the day, the VA is just arguing that they can't understand how taking toxic chemicals, body parts, and burning it with to toxic jet fuel can somehow be making us sick. That's all the argument comes down to. We need everyone to pass the PACT Act to take the VA and hold his hand and make it do its job. Civilian physicians erroneously assume that we can automatically get VA health care and as a result, many of them take the decision that they have no responsibility to help us. If you go to PubMed right now, which is a scholarly database on issues in healthcare, you can see that vaping has close to 4,000 articles that people have taken the time to research. E-cigarettes has close to 8,000. When you research uh, this, you can th find things like pieces of metal that are stuck in the lungs. Veterans are also finding veteran um, metal stuck in their lungs. We are finding titanium bound to iron in a fixed mathematical ratio of 1 to 7, which does not happen in nature, yet that's coming back consistently in our lung biopsies. Yet, when you search military burn pits, 
on PubMed, there are only 39 articles. We are being ignored and we need the PACT Act to help us survive for as long as we can. I work in healthcare. I've worked in bedside for over a decade, and most of which is in critical care, but I'm also an ICU survivor. In 2015, I developed a vicious pneumonia that filled up my right chest with five liters of infected fluid. This eventually required opening my chest up and scraping it out from the inside. The whole time I was trying to tell staff there, I was a veteran. Other veterans are having burn lung issues. And the whole time the staff would say they just knew that my lung issues were somehow not related. Deployment couldn't possibly be related to how sick I was, even though they themselves had no explanation. I've continued to face this battle time and time again as doctors find it easier to dismiss our symptoms than to listen to us. They wouldn't rather take the time. As someone who works in healthcare, I have been targeted by previous uh, management and told that I was too sick to work there and I should just leave. So I asked Mr. Portman, how morbid is this dichotomy that I was being told that I'm too healthy to be worth treating, but too sick to be working within that institution? And this would be one thing if this was just me, but I'm not just here for just me. I'm here for my coworker, Alyssa, who has a brother who's actively serving. I'm here for my classmates, Holly and Patricia, who are both married to Marines, and God willing, will never deal with this issue. This issue is not something that's going to go away. We have millions of people who have deployed between Desert Storm, Global War on Terror, and Vietnam, who is also affected by this bill. These are all people who need help. They're currently being left behind. We know that there are 260,000 veterans who are currently on the burn pit VA's registry that are stuck in a holding pattern because we know that the VA also has a 70 to 80% denial rate. Senator Portman, we need you to do your job to stand up here in solidarity with us and to, to help us pass the PACT Act. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And now I'd like to bring up another veteran. His name is Kevin Hensley. He came all the way from Michigan just to speak with us today. How am I supposed to follow that, huh? Okay, so Vietnam, over 50 years, Vietnam, and we're still passing legislation for Vietnam at this point. That's unheard of, that's unfortunate, and that is ridiculous. The Vietnam vets should have got their due diligence a long time ago. But here we are today talking about Vietnam, and now we're moving into a 20-year war from Iraq and Afghanistan where veterans are getting sick from toxic exposure and they are dying. If you don't think that you matter, you don't think that your voice matters, I want to share something with you that happened to me while I, the vote was going for Congress to move the PACT Act from the Congress to the Senate. I spoke to a representative at 10.02 in the morning as he was walking to the House floor. I thought over and over again, how was I going to warm his heart to make the right and just decision to support the PACT Act? I listed off four people from the state of Michigan, and I'll tell you them their names today. Robert Wooten, Travis Opterman, Nathan Denrider, and Larry Hauser. All four of those men deployed to the Middle East. All four of those men died from cancer, from toxic exposure. As this congressman was walking toward the floor to vote for the PACT Act, he told me explicitly over the last year that the PACT Act was ready, fire, aim, instead of ready, aim, fire. It was hurried along. It would cost too much money. It was <clears throat> going to backlog the VA system. Any legislation can be used to backlog the VA system. So that is an excuse that they're on a hiring issue right now. So if they hired the amount of people that they needed, this wouldn't be an issue. So as I thought about this over and over again, how I was going to get him to be able to support the PACT Act, and I knew that over the last year, he would tell me, no, I'm not going to support this. No, we're not going to support this. It just costs too much. 
I listed off those names that I just shared with you. I had to get off the call because unfortunately uh, my emotions got the best of me. And as this was happening, 10 minutes later I found out that this congressman voted yes for the PACT Act. It, it reminded me of playing in a football game where you're 30 seconds away from the clock expiring and the fourth quarter and you're down by two points and you make it to the 30 yard line and your team is going to kick a 45 yard field goal and you put in a rookie kicker. I'm the rookie in this legislation process. So if your vote, you don't think your vote matters, if you don't think your voice matters, your voice and your vote matter. When you talk about constituents to a legislator, they start bending their ear a little bit more because they know it's votes. So do us a favor. Call, email, write your senators. Senator Portman, I had a distinct pleasure of meeting your staff in November. Here we are in March asking you to do the same thing. Senator Portman, support the PACT Act. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Now, like I said, for 25 years, I had to continuously fight the VA to show that my exposure is what made me terminally ill. 25 years. These young men, young men and women coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq, they do not have 25 years of their life to fight for what they've already earned. Senator Portman, do the right thing. Pass the PACT Act. And I want to thank everybody for coming out today in support of us. And, uh, and uh, I'd like to bring Paul back up here one more time, and we're going to honor our fallen heroes. Um, in trying to find all the people who have been affected by this, unfortunately, a lot of that information is just being buried right now, uh, and it's not anything that's new. Uh, we've had memos that were dating back to you know, the mid 2000s saying this is a warning, this is a health issue, and rather than fix it, it was just classified instead and figured, hey, this problem will go away. Uh, so one of my missions that we've been uh, getting help with is trying to find the individuals who have died from this issue, because um, so many people will think, hey, we believe it was our family member, but we can't prove it. So I have been memorializing all the people who I can find with dog tags, just so that the people who have been lost, haven't been forgotten for this issue. Um, Gary DeWitt, Joshua Castillo, Austin Daniel, Michael Heston, Luke Hurstoni, James Hubbard, Matthew Kuhn, Wesley Black, John Thomas Collinger, Dominic Liguri, Matthew Bumpus, Bo Biden, Kevin Wilkins, Jessica Sweet, Aaron Barnes, Robert Wooten, Austin Buck, Lauren Price, Will Thompson, Todd Thompson, Benjamin Montez, Sean Sarkara, Bill McKenna, 
Scott Monroe, Danielle Nirenhadel, Stephen Oaks, Heath Robinson, Anthony Rounds, Patrick Duva, William Garza, Brian B uh, Bradstinger, Eric Birch, John Charleston, Jennifer Kepner, Daniel Somers, Jason Spotted Horse, Amanda Stewart, Daniel Bergoic, Deborah Beckett, Robert Bowman, Peter Antiho, Amy Mueller, Ron Allen, Paula King, George Zatsko, Thomas Sullivan, Gary Hughes, Bruce Haverty, Victor Jackson. Victor Jackson uh, was the uh, was a fallen relative of a security guard who I just happened to meet when I was passing out flyers for a previous town hall. This thing is everywhere. Franco Pacheco. William Bretwig. Andrew Meitner. Lucky Sands. Dave Thomas. Jeff Wells. Roderick Williams. John Uris. Jason Howard, Brett Kirchhoff, Brandon Maddock, Tom Palooza, Mark Ho, Risky Wasco, Nicholas Warbro, Robert Elsky, Robert and Heath were also born here in Ohio, Sean Terry, John Marbert, John Marshall, Ryan Mason, David McCracken, Stephen Hall, and Fred Slape. This was just a process of about three hours worth of work, and the names that have come to me since. I haven't had a chance to go back and look for more, but this is the tip of the iceberg, and this is nothing compared to what's coming to us. Senator Portman, you have supported veterans and service members in the past. We have seen you do so. We've seen you support the 9-11 firefighters. We've seen you do the right thing. We are calling on you to stand in solidarity. Don't let these deaths mean nothing. This blood has afforded us this moment to fight for the people who we can still save. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Paul. And like Paul said, that's only a portion of the list of our fallen heroes. And that list grows daily if not hourly. Senator Portman, we need your help. We need you to vote yes for the PACT Act. We know your office is right up there. So please, please hear us. And I want to thank everyone again for coming out today. And I apologize for the, the cold weather. I wish, wish it was a little bit warmer and not as rainy. And I want to thank the media for coming out today because this is an extremely important issue. Everybody's heard of uh, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. This issue is even bigger than that. Every American knows somebody who's been affected by burn pits. If you don't know somebody personally, you know a family member who had somebody in their family who's been affected by burn pits. That's how big this issue is. And I also want to thank John Stewart and John Feel, the two individuals who helped 9-11 first responders get their uh, health care and their benefits for joining our campaign here and helping us veterans get ours. It's not that we're disgruntled, it's just that we're dying, people. We're dying daily. And we do need this bill passed so we can get the health care 
that we rightfully earned and deserve. Thank you.